believe another tragedy could happen again. And crisis chaos. A fire leaves elderly folks as old as 100 sitting for hours without anywhere to go. This morning, my families are upset and what they want changed. And we are waking up this morning to conditions ripe for storms. Meteorologist Lee Spann will show us when and where we can expect some rain. Well, good morning and welcome to News Channel 8 today. I'm Gail Guayardo. And I'm Marco Villarreal. Glad you're with us on this Wednesday. And I'll tell you what, you know what's been my cue to start going to bed? It's when I start hearing thunder. Oh, yes. In the evening, it's time to go, right, Lee? Yep, yeah, pretty much that is our, our bedtime. Not for most people, that's not their bedtime. But here's what's happening for today. Notice I'm already tracking one or two showers with max defender rate out in the Gulf of Mexico. As we head through the day, I'm going to switch this over to max defender 8's future radar. And at the moment, winds are pretty light. But what will happen is we're going to transition into an onshore wind. So notice these arrows here. Notice what direction they're coming from off the Gulf, right? So by 6 a.m., one or two showers may be pushed from the shore, from the water onshore right on through 9 o'clock. It's not a huge rain chance in the morning, but if you're right along the coast, that's your only chance for seeing rain is the morning. As the day goes on, notice how it's dry along the coast in places farther inland, like Polk and Highlands County, have a much better rain chance as those storms get pushed farther and farther inland. And then when it's not raining on you, 91, but you factor in the dew point, which is increasing with the humidity, it's going to feel more like 102. Yeah, so at 538, I have an eight-day temperature trend for you, Gail and Marco. All right, thanks so much, Lee. Well, this morning, questions and outrage remain in the new Tampa tragedy, and it's proving that getting mental health in Florida is nearly impossible. The parents of Mikey Smores tell News Channel 8 they tried to get help for him for 10 years, but the help never came, and now a father is dead. Avery Cotton joins us now to break down what really happened to Morris when he came to trying to get help for him. Yeah, this is a really telling and very sad story here. Essentially, he was evaluated at Grace Point for a week. Tampa police say he showed signs and claimed he was going to hurt someone, including the president. And despite his parents telling the folks at Grace Point not to release him, they did anyway. Beg those people. And so he, he said, he said. And taught and said to them, he will be able to talk his way out. Don't listen to his words. Watch his actions. I said, Mr. Grayson, please do not release my son to the streets. I said, right now, he's in a psychotic state. But Grace Point did release him, and days later is when he ran down Pedro Aguaberry, killing him and injuring his two sons while they were enjoying a bike ride. Grace Point argued that there was no transition or placement program available for Morse, and they had no option but to release him, which shows just how dire the need is in the state for mental health help. But if they but the listen to us, this man would have never lost his life. These, these children wouldn't have lost their father, and our son would be getting help. Morse is scheduled for a bond hearing tomorrow, and we are told his parents are going to be visiting him in jail soon as well. Now, Steve Andrews, investigative reporter, has been asking a lot of questions about mental health in the state. He found that nearly half of the inmates in the Hillsborough County Jail are on psychotropic medications, which is very telling here because it shows that our jails in the state are essentially warehousing some people who need help. And even those who are insured will tell you for every dollar spent mm -hmm. on insurance, mm -hmm. you know, just pennies are spent on mental health. So really, it's a, a big problem across the state of Florida for everyone. Yeah. yeah, and with all the problems that come out of this, mm -hmm. I think a lot of this is the root of so many different problems, so we need to take care of this. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, thanks, Avery. It's 534 this morning, a tragic warning about listening to music while you're out exercising. A Hillsborough County teacher was hit and killed by a garbage truck in South Tampa while wearing earbuds. The jogger uh, had her earphones in, um, was jogging down, uh, I don't know how I didn't hear the garbage truck and just got, you know, smashed. Zachary Schimberg describes the moment he saw a garbage truck backing up as 65-year-old Marcia Woodside Rivers jogged along Davis Boulevard. At this time, the driver is not facing any charges, but this crash is prompting folks who exercise to think twice about being able to hear while working out. Certainly you need to pay attention to your surroundings because uh, you have cars, bicycles, all kinds of things, so it's very important to pay attention to your surroundings. Other suggestions for listening to music while jogging, keep the volume low enough so that you can hear what's happening around you. 
An investigation is now underway into the death of the former mayor of St. Pete Beach. Deputies found Stephen McFarland dead in his home of what appears to be a self-inflicted wound. This is video of McFarland from 2012. He served as mayor from 2011 to 2014. And right now, questions about evacuation plans after this fire at a Lakeland complex for the elderly. Some of the folks living at Lake Morton Plaza are as old as 106, and they had to sit for hours waiting. And this morning, their family members outraged. Jana Jones, she's live in Lakeland at Lake Morton Plaza. And Jana, not only is it sad that these folks had to be evacuated because of a fire, but then had to wait outside in the heat. Good morning to you, Marco. It is very sad. 128 elderly residents had to be rushed out of this building, but once they got outside, it was a case of hurry up and wait. This fire ripped through this senior living facility just after noon yesterday. When crews arrived, heavy black smoke was found in the 10-story building. Lakeland firefighters, Lakeland police, and the 30 employees at the plaza helped get the elderly out. The problem happened after that as many seniors sat outside in the heat in soiled clothing. Eventually, the residents were put on an air-conditioned bus, but were not taken to another facility until late last night. We spoke with one woman whose grandmother and 103-year-old great-grandmother live at the facility. There was no planning. Everything is unorganized. We were begging for information in there. We got all kinds of incorrect information all afternoon. And then when we would try to, to get more information, we were cut off, we were ignored, we were snapped at. It, it, this has been horrible. There is no evacuation plan at all here. The residents here were taken to places in Winter Haven and Brooksville, but that last bus didn't leave here until 11 last night. That is almost 12 hours after that fire broke out. So again, family members very upset and they want to know if the evacuation and emergency plan will be changed moving forward. Of course, I'm working to find that out and I'll let you know what happens. Marco? Yeah, there's changes that need to happen after a situation like this. Jana, thank you. At 537 this morning, the search is on for the person who ran over sea turtle nest on Siesta Key. Moat researchers discovered the tire tracks over eight nests that had been blocked off. They believe the tracks were made by someone riding an ATV or golf cart. The sea turtles are an endangered species protected by state and federal laws. When the person is caught, he or she could face federal charges. All right, new developments in the case of an alligator left inside a Bradenton Wawa. The FWC reports it will cite the teenager with a misdemeanor for leaving the gator there. The gator was spotted in the store on Lorraine Road June 15th. They think it was a prank. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Mixing hockey and beer is the idea behind the Bolts Brew Fest. The Tampa Bay Lightning announced it'll bring back the popular festival for a second year. So mark your calendars for Friday. August 17th at Amelie Arena. The fest is going to feature craft beers from local breweries, games, and appearances by Lightning players. Lightning insiders can buy tickets now. Other tickets go on sale tomorrow. But yeah, that was huge last year, the yeah. first year they did it. Yeah, and this is a great opportunity for all the local breweries to come together and highlight their product. And there are lots of tasty beers out there these days. Yes. You get them all in one spot. And you don't have to go outside in the heat. And you oh. might need a lightning player. <laughs> you might need a lightning player. All right, it is 538. Let's take a look live outside right now. This is the Lake Club in Lakewood Ranch. 74 degrees. Right now, about 88% humidity. So it's, it's not terribly uncomfortable. But as the day goes on, unfortunately, I do think that the humidity is going to increase along with the temperatures. We're already at 80 by 8 a.m., 87 at 11, and then spend hours here between about 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock where we're at least at 90 or a little bit higher. And I wanted to show you the rain chances because I say that there's a 30% rain chance today, but it varies a little bit depending on where you live. So shaded in yellow here, right along the coast, your rain chance is mostly before lunchtime and it really has only about a 20% chance. Most of us around Wesley Chapel, Tampa, Lakeland, Waimama, Mayaka City, your rain chance is 30%. But once we head into farther inland spots, the rain chance is a little bit higher. Still red tide detected along the Sarasota coast. And yeah, you can bet near 90 through the next eight days, Meredith. All right, thanks, Lee. Yeah, about 5 o'clock every afternoon, that's when one of my dogs hides because she knows the storms are coming. This is a live view of I-4 at I-75. Starting to see an increase in volume as we approach the morning rush hour, but 
nothing to slow anyone down, so that's great news. Downtown Tampa, this is 275 southbound, just past the merge with I-4. It also looks great if you are out the door in Polk County, heading through Hillsborough County towards Tampa. Average speeds at or above the speed limit. Marco Gale, back to you. I thank you, Meredith. Think a broken or lost smartphone will not happen to you. You're pretty much even odds of having something bad happen to your phone. Mm-hmm. Eight on your side's Consumer Reports explains how smartphone insurance may help save you some money and your sanity. Plus, one in seven people have HIV and don't even know it. I'm Amanda Shavari, and coming up, I'm going to tell you where and how you can get tested for free all across the Bay Area. News Channel 8 traffic is brought to you by Wild Land Rover Sarasota. Hurry to Ashley Home Store during our Stars and Stripes event for unbeatable hot buys starting at $85. Come celebrate the freedom to save with amazing prices on sofa love seat sets throughout the store. Get these deals before they're gone. Ashley Home Store. This is home. Life can be difficult, but banking doesn't have to be. If you choose GTE Financial, with GTE's go-to Visa credit card, Lucas got the best rate in Tampa Bay. Join today and open up a world of possibilities. GTE Financial. Gee, that's easy. At the Fernandez firm. We represent people wrongfully injured in automobile crashes. Have you been wrongfully injured? Contact us at FernandezFirm.com. Thanks for the ride along, Captain. I've never been in one of these before. Even though Geico is... Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. Uh, got cut off there. What were you saying? Oh, no, no, no. Maybe the Geico's been proudly serving the military for over 75 years. Is that what you wanted to say? Mm-hmm. I have to say, you seem a lot chattier on TV. Mm. Geico, proudly serving the military for over 75 years. You okay back there, buddy? I, I put it in gear and... <laughs> yeah. You need a new transmission. Big job. Oh. Why would you trust your transmission with any of those other guys? People who know go to Amco. Double A... CO. Nobody gets your carpet, tile, or hardwood as clean and healthy as Stanley Steamer. That's why I call. Call or go online for our $99 special. Stanley Steamer, just certified cleaner. Chief Meteorologist Steve Jervie and Max Defender 8, always on your side. Introducing Next Day Delivery from Ashley Home Store. Create your perfect bedroom or mattress set and we'll deliver the very next day, seven days a week. Buy today, sleep better tomorrow with Next Day Delivery, now available from Ashley Home Store. This is home. Storm Team 8 Weather is sponsored by All Florida Ram Jack, your local foundation repair experts. Happening today, it's National HIV Testing Day. And communities across the state are working to raise awareness. And our Amanda Shavari joins us now from downtown Tampa at the Florida Department of Health. Amanda, this is one of the many places that people can get free screenings today. That's exactly right. And it's really so important that people come down here because one in seven people have HIV and don't even know it. And here in Florida, HIV cases appear to be on the rise, according to the CDC. Miami has the highest infection rate per capita in the country. Also in the top 10, Fort Lauderdale. HIV testing is so important because early detection means people can get earlier treatment, leading to longer, healthier lives. Knowing your HIV status can also help protect future partners, which is why today, at sites all over the Bay Area, there will be free testing. We should be getting tested once a year for different diseases, and this is just a moment that the health department takes an opportunity and makes it free for the, for the community. And some good news here in Florida. We actually lead the nation with more than 1,400 registered HIV testing sites. Today, many of those will be offering those free tests for those who are 13 years and older. To find a site near you, head to WFLA.com. And coming up in the next half hour, we'll tell you what we've learned about how doctors may be missing very important opportunities to offer HIV testing to those who are at high risk. Again, Gail, that's coming up in a half hour. All right, an important day for folks. Thank you so much, Amanda. Well, all new this morning, man versus vehicle sounds like a bad idea. And quite honestly, it is a bad idea, but that didn't stop a man in the Miami area from attacking this SUV during a fit of road rage. First, he gives a nice fist flex, mm -hmm. showing off the guns, then he Ooh. delivers a few punches. Oh, then he runs 
from afar and attacks. When he feels content, he swaggers back to his own car and takes off. This video has already been viewed nearly 100,000 times online. You think my fists are bad? You should see the other car. <laughs> All right, also new this morning, a bald eagle rescue in West Virginia. Let's take a closer look. Somehow this bald eagle fell into the Ohio River. He was able to tread water with his seven-foot wingspan, but still needed some help getting out. We've done that by using the dam employees had a This is a required monthly test of the emergency alert system. Had this been an actual emergency or dangerous situation, official messages and directions would have followed the alert tones. This test is brought to you by the Florida Division of Emergency Management, the Florida Association of Broadcasters, and your local broadcast station or cable provider. This concludes the required monthly test. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Researchers found the smartphone-based applications performed better. On average, you could make a call five seconds faster than using built-in systems. All of the in-vehicle infotainment systems that are available to consumers today uh, are more demanding than what AAA would recommend. Experts remind drivers your main task while behind the wheel is paying attention to the road. If you need to program your GPS or text someone, you should pull over and stop the car. So accidents happen especially to our phones. And when a pricey smartphone takes a hit, it can amount to hefty repair cost. Avery Kate okay, uh, Cotton here with this morning's Consumer Reports on whether or not smartphone insurance is a good idea or not. Yeah, we've all had that feeling when we drop our phone, did it crack? Or when our phone gets wet, what do we do? Well, Consumer Reports breaks down if it's worth it to get insurance. There's a story behind every cell phone mishap. Well, the worst one was when it dropped in the toilet. Yeah, I've broken like all my phones. My son has had two breaks. My phone's actually cracked right here, right now. But what are the odds of a smartphone problem happening to you? In a recent survey, Consumer Reports found that over the last two years, half of the folks they surveyed had at least one major incident with a phone in their household. And if there are kids in the house, that goes up to 81%. Without coverage, the average cost to repair a cracked screen for an Apple iPhone 8 is $145. A Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, $277. Phones in general now are more expensive because they have more sophisticated components, which means if you break it, it's going to cost you a lot more to fix it. Apple and Samsung sell their own protection plans. Apple Care Plus for an iPhone 8 costs $129 and $199 for the iPhone X. Samsung Premium Care is $1199 a month. Coverage plans from Apple and Samsung don't cover loss or theft. They're basically extended warranties, not insurance. So they cover things like cracked screens, mechanical failures. Or you could consider getting insurance through your provider. All four major carriers cover repairs along with loss and theft, depending on the type of plan you select and your device. But is cell phone insurance really necessary? The important thing is to know thyself. You need to take a step back and ask yourself, am I the kind of person that tends to lose things? Do I have teenagers who tend to lose or break things? Consumer Reports rule of thumb, if you feel like within a two-year period you're likely to have two or more incidents occur to your phone, you may want to get insurance. And according to Consumer Reports, 30% of survey respondents said someone in their household had cracked their smartphone screen in the past two years. Uh, know thyself.